In this video, I want to summarize the way that class hierarchies work. Remember, a class is a blueprint for an object. It determines what's in an object and how it behaves. In Ruby, you might have a thing class that has a name and a description. I can create from the thing class any number of individual thing objects, each of which has its own name and description. And now I want to create a treasure class and a room class. And these are the blueprints from which usable treasure and room objects can be created. And these two have names and descriptions. But since I already have a class that handles those, I just decide to make both the treasure and the room class descend from the thing class. Now the treasure class inherits everything that's already in the thing class. Here that's its name and its description. So all I have to do is to add on any extra data or behavior that is specific to treasures. So here I give the treasure a value. Even though I've only coded one specific new feature or attribute, the value, in the treasure class, it actually has three attributes, name, value, and description. The same is true of the room class. It descends from thing, so it automatically gets a name and a description, and it adds on one additional attribute, namely the exits to the room. And I can carry on creating further levels of subclasses. Here, weapon descends from treasure. It inherits the name, description, and value, and adds on destructive power. Meanwhile, the jewel class descends from treasure too. So it has a name, description, and value, and it adds one more attribute, type of gem. So now, this is the situation I have. I have a jewel and a weapon, which are special types of treasure. I could say that the jewel, the weapon, and the treasure class are also special types of thing, because thing, the thing class, is the ultimate ancestor of all the others. And I can go on to define different lines of descent down other branches of the class family tree. Here, vault inherits from room and it adds on one extra attribute, a combination lock. So if I create a vault object, it will have access to all the features defined in all its ancestors. So it has all the features of room, that is, name, description, and exits. But it won't have access to any features defined in some other branch of the family tree. So it won't have a value variable, for example, which is defined by treasure in this branch. You can see that by creating class hierarchies, we can reuse code and behavior from ancestor classes. Ancestors are generally more generic the further back you go, and descendants become increasingly more specific. This lesson is taken from my online Ruby course, Learn Ruby Programming in 10 Easy Steps, available on udemy.com. For an in-depth guide to Ruby programming, you can also get my book, The Book of Ruby, available from No Starch Press.